if I, if something was set fire and someone wrote David Cameron on the side of it, does it mean he did it? It, it just seems ridiculous to me, and I think everyone can see through it. That, it's, that that's done to make it look like the English Defence League. And if I'm honest, I'm completely sceptical that it's even non-Muslims that have okay. done that. So if any EDL member was found to have been involved in any attack on any Muslim in this country, you would utterly condemn it? Utterly condemn it. Disgraceful. Every single speech I've gave and since Woolwich, and in fact, not since Woolwich, in the last four years, condemn any acts of violence. So the only way to solve this is through democratic process, through peacefully protesting. We're trying to tell people to do is to channel their anger and frustration, because you have to accept there's a massive undercurrent, undercurrent of anger across this country. And what we want to prevent is instances like this. What? Let people feel like they're having their voices heard, and let people feel like there's some light at the end of the tunnel in solving these problems. What is it that you want? What is, you know, a, a Britain governed by the EDL, what would it look like? Well, we wouldn't have Islamic extremists uh, recruiting on our streets, that's for one. When they're calling for the implementation of Sharia law and to overthrow our Queen and our democracy, we'd intern them. Here's the thing, how do you distinguish between what is acceptable Islam? And I presume you think that some Muslims are entirely law-abiding law um, and their faith is acceptable. Ahmadiyya sect is completely and utterly peaceful. They do tireless work for our armed forces. Um, but the sects that we disagree with are the Saudi-funded ones. Remember, this is a country, Saudi Arabia, where it's illegal to have a Bible. Women are not allowed to drive cars. You're not even allowed on the same side of the road as Muslims on the, on the road to Mecca. There's okay, complete so apartheid. And now they are funding extremist, Wahhabi and Salafi forms of Islam, which are completely extreme. They completely, they, but they, teach, they teach and promote non-integration. Do we want this for our society? Do we want this in Britain? Do we want do we want to leave the next generation to pick up the pieces of this broken country? There will be an awful lot of people who agree with you, but they may not agree with the way that you intend to go about it. And I wonder how far you would go in trying to get your ends. No, I, I, our, our tactics are completely questionable, yes. And I understand people who say you're going about it the wrong way. But what choice do we have as working class people who, who as soon as you put your head above the parapet, you're called a racist or a fascist? Who wants to sit down and talk to us? We, all we keep hearing is that people need to sit around tables and, and, and discuss these issues. No one wants to sit around tables with working class people in this country, with the, with the English Defence League. So we're, what, we're what are you prepared to do? Continue to peacefully protest and wake the British public up, which is not what we're prepared to do, it's exactly what we are doing. If Many it, can I ask you something? If it is peaceful pro protest, why do you wear balaclavas? Um, I myself have had four official Osman warnings. Okay. I've had four Osman ones. I've been beaten, at, dragged out of my car. My children have been threatened to be decapitated. We've just had six people sentenced today who were planning to bring bombs and guns and murder us and chop us up. So do you blame any person who's got a, a job within a council, say, and lives within near a Muslim area who wants to cover their face? Now, what you should be asking is why Muslim women wear burqas. It's so that Muslim men don't feel the urge to have sex with them. Now, who do you think you, has the... Who do you think so has the... You, no, who do, you do, you object, think has do you object to women wearing veils? I do, yes. But you don't object to you wearing a balaclava? I do, yes. I think that all face coverings should be banned in public. And I do... And our demonstrations, we ask people to remove them. And in fact, this week I've done exactly the same with a young lad when we was in London. And he explained to me that his HR department had called him in because photographs of him had been sent of him at a demonstration. Is, and he'd been threatened with his job. Can I just establish then that any violent act you utterly condemn if it's by an EDL member? Utterly condemn. By anybody. Not and by anybody an who makes a Nazi salute, an well, EDL uh, member, you utterly condemn it? Well, I think if I was standing next to him, there'd be a violent act. I, uh, I don't, if, you've, if you know, look into our history, I was actually arrested for assaulting someone doing that at our demonstrations. I don't, I wouldn't tolerate that. And to fact, the fact that you're even trying to pretend there was anyone giving Nazi salutes at one of our demonstrations recently. So why don't you clean out the EDL then? We have cleaned it out. There's no Nazis in the English Defence League. The and Islamism, you... Islamism and Nazism are opposite sides of the same coin. They're, they're, they're both a bit need defeating. It's just that the only one that's flourishing, flourishing in this country is Islamism. Where do you think this will end? Because you say you don't have a voice that white English working class people don't no, have. I didn't say white working class. See, what I say is that non-Muslim community working class don't have a voice. And where will it end? It's not going to end pretty at the minute, is it? When we look at what's going on. Look at the terror. Look at the people in court today. They were going to plant a bomb. They were going to cut people up. They had shotguns. Look what happened to Lee Rigby. What people need to do is stop burying their head in the sands. If you want that to happen again, then you keep carrying on this country the way it is. You keep letting more so Muslim you immigration in. You, kept, you so keep allowing Anjum Chowdhury to stroll around our streets promoting hatred and intolerance. 
because I, that, I, we don't want that. We don't want, a, but, we don't but, want there to be... Just, in, in Mr Robinson, but yeah. you haven't made clear how you would change things, how you could, within the laws as they currently stand, I would change outlaw things. Sharia. That's well, one thing, straight away. Sharia isn't in place in this country. There's a hundred Sharia law courts operating in this country. A hundred. And they're but you don't they're, operate, no, you are not judged under Sharia law. That doesn't matter. British women are. British Muslim women are, and they get 50% less than a man, and as, so soon as, child, as soon as their child gets the age of seven, it's taken off them by the father. Would that be enough? Would that be enough to satisfy you if Sharia, the Sharia law courts in this country were removed? No, not just Sharia law courts. All aspects of Sharia, outlaw them, halal meat, they're all under Sharia. Halal meat? You'd, you'd outlaw halal meat? Oh, well, mosques? I, I, I'd label. Would you allow mosques? Would I, I, I'd stop the building of mosques in this country until Islam reforms in such a way and works in this country with Western democracy and freedom. Do we're willing to negotiate and talk to Muslims and any organisations across this country to bring peace. But you're not going to get bring, you're not going to bring peace by appeasing one community and treating them better than the other community. Tommy Robinson, thank you very much. Thank you.